something comes across my desk that makes me question a lot of things. Uh, you know, for reference, I live in the United States of America, North America. So our economy works in different ways than other areas of the world. So this might not apply to those other areas of the world because I obviously can only speak for how the economy works where I live. But scalping is a big deal in the United States. Uh, it's completely legal. You can buy any item basically anywhere uh, in the United States and resell it for anything that you want. You want to go buy a bag of sunflower seeds, that I'm, like I'm staring at right now, for $2 at the gas station and resell it to, you know online or to a buddy for $10. You can do that. Uh, good luck, but uh, someone might be willing to pay that $10 premium. Uh, the only thing you can't do is false advertise. Like, I can't go buy this $2 bag of sunflower seeds, uh, take it out of its package, repackage it into something else, and claim that, you know, these are special sunflower seeds that come from this exclusive part of the world um, because that's a lie. That's false advertising. Uh, that is actually illegal. So the reason I'm, I'm talking about this is because there was a story that kind of broke. Uh, not a lot of people saw it, but broke over on NeoGAF and actually it originated right here on YouTube about the NES Classic and even the Nintendo Switch and how there is apparently a group of three people uh, that are considered to be liquidators. And for those who don't know, liquidators essentially acquire assets for, for way under what they were originally bought for uh, because they're not selling. And then they hope to, once they acquire these assets, obviously they pay for them, they hope to, over time, liquidate those assets for a profit. And this is significant to think about because... Um, you can make a lot of money doing this, but it's usually off the back of, of, of a failed product or, you know, someone went bankrupt and now they have all these assets that they need to get rid of and they're not going to get as much for them as they were originally, but they'll get some money. Liquidating is, I, I don't really think there's anything wrong with liquidating. You know, yeah, obviously the liquidators make a lot of money, but they're, you know, people are still usually buying the products for less than what the original market value was. So whatever, it's fine. I have no problem with the liquidators. But apparently, this group of three, you know, it's a, it's one company. It, it, we have no names. Uh, you know, they're worried about privacy and and you know, having their warehouses raided and yada yada yada. But these three people uh, were talking to another person who does a lot of scalping. And there was this big, long email chain with lots of images and pictures, and I'm going to throw some of them up in the video, of them having pallets upon pallets upon pallets of NES Classic Editions and Nintendo Switch units. Uh, and it almost looks like they're attaining these items before they hit retail. So from manufacturing and shipping to the United States, and from that point until it gets into retail warehouses, you know, out of Nintendo's warehouses and into retail ones, uh, there is uh, so, uh, an exchange happening, and these aren't—they are not claiming they, you know, these are falling off the truck units. Uh, they claim that they purchased these units. Whether they purchased them from uh, the warehouses or directly from Nintendo, or you know, cut a, cut a deal with manufacturers, or if they're just people who um, smartly are. Uh, examining eBay and Craigslist and, and all these, you know, they're really, you know, hawkeyeing, waiting for someone to be frustrated and throw up that NES Classic Edition for $25 or throw up that Nintendo Switch unit for a hundred bucks. You know, I, I know that seems crazy because these, you know, <laughs> even used, not even brand new in package, uh, both the Switch and the NES Classic Edition still sell uh, for more than their MSRP in general. But you will find deals out there they, they go super fast. That's why you don't see them very often. But occasionally you'll find deals where people sell them at less than MSRP just because they just want to get rid of it, right? Um, they, they put it up in a garage sale even just because they, they want to get rid of it. So so they could be get, attaining the units this way. You know, because they claim, they, they you know, or at least one of the email exchanges suggests that they paid like $250 per unit. But uh, they're selling like NES Classic Editions as an example for, for just $140 on Amazon. So... I, it's highly doubtful they paid two hundred plus dollars for an NES Classic Edition just to sell it for significantly less. Um, but this came to light because obviously GameStop and ThinkGeet recently had um, you know brand new NES Classic Edition bundles, uh, and now Amazon themselves 
have like eight different truck locations. Like this is where you can buy Amazon products in person temporarily off, basically off the truck. And <laughs> they're selling brand new units of NES Classic Editions at MSRP. And, you know, a lot of people are wondering, uh, what happened? How did, did GameStop, did, did Amazon just hold back stock? Which, you know, GameStop, you know, they were actually selling things at a little bit higher price. So you could argue they did that to make money. Whereas, like, Amazon selling them an MSRP, um, that they wouldn't make any sense from the whole bad products just to resell them at the same amount of money they would have made if they didn't hold the product back. Like, there's no advantage for GameStop here, or for Amazon in this case. So it sounds like... A lot of these units might have been obtained, as an example, from this liquidator. And this is just one that we know about. There could be several different liquidation groups or scalper groups. And it's one thing, you know, if, if someone got a hold of 10 units. Like, that seems reasonable, right? For someone to hawkeye different retailer websites and different in-person stores and end up with 10 units and resell them. Like, like that's a that kind of scalping market, while it sucks, it, it doesn't bother me as much because, I mean, that's, that's just how the American economy works. And I'm not going to lie. Like, I've used to, when I was a kid, I used to buy Pokemon cards so I could resell them. Um, and hope I hit on, hit on a rare card. So, like, it, it, it's okay. I, I don't view this in as negative a light as some people do. But to have um, one specific person, I mean, you'll see in some of these email chains I'm putting up, you know, where they say, we have 500 units. We have 800 units of NES Classic. We have 1,000 Nintendo Switch units. Uh, this, to me, is just mind-boggling. Uh, the length at which scalpers and liquidation companies, um, which, by the way, like, you know... It, it, I'm going to consider, well, this is a liquidation company, which is probably why they had, you know, $200,000, $300,000 they needed to purchase all this stuff. Um, you know, they are they are acting like scalpers because these are products that they're not liquidating <laughs> um, to, to turn a profit. They're scalping to turn a profit because these are things that are selling and are in high demand, whereas liquidators are usually trying to turn profits on things that aren't selling very well and aren't in high demand. So this is like the opposite of what liquidators usually do. Uh, but obviously there's a high profit margin to be made here if they're somehow able to get a hold of these units between when they're made and when they hit retail stores. Uh, and again, this is just one person doing it. And apparently, uh, when I was going through the NeoGAF thread, just to see if there's any additional, uh, information on this guy named Gregor, the fell hand says, I mean, you know, this video is silly cause it was reported in the video and it says, I work in this industry, resellers and liquidation. Only 30% of the sales of the company I work for is in video games. A three man team buying one plus million in stock as an example and slowly selling it is becoming more standard. If you FBA, aka send the item to Amazon so Amazon fulfills it, all you do is select a price and or sell to Amazon at a set price, then ship the items in bulk to Amazon to handle. Amazon takes a 25% cut on most video games now, and on top of that, a percentage of the gross sales and a listing fee for video games. Even as liquidators, this three-man company most likely spends 60 plus hours a week trolling eBay and other sites to snatch up the classic uh, that go up cheap. And it's standard policy or standard practice to raise prices on high demand items, even if they have lots in stock, especially if they have lots in stock. That's just basic capitalism, supply and demand. They could be buying, could they be buying knockoffs from China? Yep. And have, they have probably sold some knockoffs from China, knowingly or unknowingly. It happens. Resellers of retro stuff aren't the devil. They act as a buffer to people that don't want to buy uh, from Bob, you know, aka a random person, off eBay. A good reseller will test, clean, and complete a system before sending it out. So, in that sense, you're paying for peace of mind. Now, resellers that target new items and buy everything to increase costs, I'm not a fan of, but that's how the market works. So, this guy's suggesting that this is actually really common, uh, both with old items, obviously we know that, but also with brand new items. And while they personally frown upon it, it is something that a lot of people do do. So... Again, it's a frustrating situation for us as consumers, like wrapping my mind around the fact that there is someone out there, maybe potentially several different companies out there, that have warehouses with pallets of NES Classic Editions, with pallets of Nintendo Switch units, just sitting there and being listed up for a ton more money, just really, it really irks me. This is the point, the point where I think... Uh, there needs to somehow be a way, there isn't currently, but a legal way to limit this a little bit. 
uh, on high demand products. I don't know if there's any way they could actually enforce a law on this, like allow people to still scalp, but then at the same time have a limit on how much they can scalp or how much they're allowed to keep in stock. I don't know if, if that could ever be legally enforced. I think a lot of judges would throw out any attempt, even by the federal government, to attempt to to put any restrictions on this. I don't think it would ever pass Senate. Um, so many people make money off this, and, you know, the United States is about making money, you know, whatever. And obviously, you know, the counterbalance is, well, Nintendo could just make so many of these units, flood the market with Switches, flood the market with NES Classics, that ends up wrecking the value of having all these units in a warehouse. Uh, and that's possible. Like, obviously, Nintendo's eventually going to catch up with Switch stock. Like, they're not going to keep trying to shortchange in the market. They're going to catch up eventually. And when they do, obviously, all these units sitting in a warehouse aren't, aren't, aren't you know, aren't going to be able to get liquidated uh, for anything other than MSRP. So they're hoping to sell all these units before Nintendo can catch up. And when it comes to the NES Classic Edition, they can take their sweet time selling the NES Classic Edition, or they sell off some stock to GameStop, or they sell some stock to Amazon, or and, you know, what are, when they're selling their individual stuff, like they can take their time selling it because it's not going to be made anymore. So even if people, as an example, won't pay $140 for an NES Classic today, won't pay $200 for an NES Classic today, three, four, five years from now, people might be willing to pay that because it's 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 going to be even rarer and rarer to see NES Classic. Edition editions anywhere so yeah it 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 sucks that this happens and i as a consumer feel frustrated i'm not upset that i don't have an nes classic edition um i do have a nintendo switch so like you know i have one of the two high, you know high demand products here but it, it just frustrates me knowing that there are specific companies out there that do this uh, I, I think in the back of my mind i always knew that uh the scalper mentality uh, and the liquidator mentality, like I knew it was infecting video games. I knew that like, this happened, but I was always in denial that it was this bad, right? Like having consumers, you know, that, that want to sell stuff they bought or, or, or purposely buy, you know, five, 10 units to sell, you know, we, we've seen it like, Oh, where someone has a whole trunk full of Nintendo switches. It's like, I know that stuff happens. The pictures are out there, but like, we're not talking about trunk fulls of Nintendo switches or a single pallet of NES classic editions. We're talking about pallets upon pallets outlets and like like warehouses full of this stuff um it, oh man it sucks it, it really 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 sucks the nintendo switch i'm not as worried about um in fact they're only even selling the switch apparently on amazon for something like a 20 or 40 dollar profit so um that you know they obviously know that the market for switch isn't going to be around uh very long in terms of paying more for the unit um but yeah i this this is obviously just Ugh. it's frustrating that it happens, but welcome to America, man. I, man, I just feel bad for, for general consumers. Uh, and again, you know, it's not like Nintendo's not, you know, not partially to blame for uh, this because of them. Not, not, I'm not going to blame them necessarily for the Switch because it sounds like there's a, sh a parts shortage thing. So like Nintendo, it's not necessarily 100% their fault. They can't keep up with demand. But the... <laughs> The NES Classic, Nintendo did stop making it, uh, despite the fact that the final month they, they were producing it, it was the second best-selling console in North America behind the Nintendo Switch. So uh, Nintendo literally was owning the market that, that month for console sales. So I, N Nintendo should have kept making it, obviously, with it still selling that much and tapered it off once numbers started to dip. But uh, whatever, we got the SNES Classic Edition coming now, which they claim is going to have more units... Uh, and should be easier to find but uh yeah because the story i was going to talk about today was how nintendo might have told walmart to cancel all those pre-orders but uh yeah th this felt like a bigger deal to me i guess even though it's something i think we all know or you know think happens or maybe we didn't think it was this bad but uh oh man some days i wish i lived in a different country <laughs> Anyways, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Gents from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. I'll have links to where you can find all this information in the description below, uh, including the various YouTubers that helped uncover it. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one.